We've seen increasing pressure to reform insolvency law during this time. What has this really key report that's just been released told us? Look, what it's, what it's told us, something that we know, and that is surprisingly, the number of businesses that are entering external administration has fallen dramatically during this period of time. Fundamentally, I think, because of um, JobKeeper pushing out bank payments, ATO payments and so on. In fact, in June, the level of um, voluntary or external administrations was 51% below last year. It means that there's a lot of businesses out there that under normal circumstances would have gone, um, would have gone bankrupt, would have gone into administration liquidation um, and haven't. And on top of that, there's a large number of businesses that are really struggling to get through the COVID situation, even with significant state and federal government support. So what the report says is it's really important for these businesses to have a viability assessment um, we believe that the federal government should make up to $5,000 available for them to go to their financial advisor to have a viability assessment. And if it turns out they're not viable, for them to look at going into liquidation now. Because the longer they put it off, their debts will accumulate, their interest compounds. And then we're saying, because we know there's a large number of these, there needs to be a much simpler, quicker and cheaper approach uh, for administration, for liquidation, generally for small businesses. At the moment, it's a similar system for really little businesses as it is for big businesses. Very complex, lots of red tape, and most importantly, very expensive. Well, this is the concern for so many, isn't it? That Australia has now a record deficit coming. We've spent billions of dollars keeping businesses afloat that, as you've rightly said, would normally have gone under even without the pandemic. So is this something that feeds into the argument that the government shouldn't have been keeping these businesses going during this time? Look, I don't think so. Look, the issue was for the government that they had to get money into the economy, into businesses, uh, all of those businesses that were doing fine you know, four or five months ago before, before COVID, but uh, due to closed down, government induced um, closed down or semi closed down of the economy, particular businesses, particular um, parts, particularly sorts of businesses, things like overseas travel, those sorts of areas, that those businesses are under stress. It's totally appropriate for government to support those businesses. And it's incredibly difficult for government to be able to assess businesses that are viable going forward from businesses that might not be. Um, you have to look at every business individually, which is the reason we're saying um, a voucher, whatever, up to $5,000 to encourage these businesses, which remember are very cash poor at the moment, so probably without the voucher won't do it, uh, to go along to their, to, to, to their financial advisor, the accountant, their bookkeeper, whatever, and get a viability assessment done. And hopefully the answer is, yes, you're viable, but you'll have to do these things. Yes, you're viable, but this is what we're gonna to have to do with cash flow. It's all not a negative outcome. Hopefully a lot of it is turnaround. But for those, I think, probably not insignificant number of businesses that really aren't viable, the message has gotta be, it's better to go now than it is just to hang in there. Because every day you hang in there, interest compounds, if you've got staff, their staff entitlements increase, things like holiday pay, all those sorts of things. And things like deferred rent and deferred bank payments, you're gonna to have to pay them in the end. They just get, in many cases, bigger if you don't pay them now. So we're urging government to say, let's get on with this, but if we're going to have a, a large number of small businesses go to the wall, it's really important to have a system that is um, inexpensive, quick, 30 days, turn around, and that the small business owner has input into the way the business is managed through liquidation. You know, how you sell property, how you manage the business, those things. Because, you know, they're the ones that understand their business best. We want maximum amount of money back here? to creditors. Sorry, isn't the risk yep. here that we have a lot of companies and small businesses trading insolvent? And that's sort of serious. I mean, it's a breach of the Corporations Act and it also 
puts at risk so many employees' benefits, as you were saying. Is this something we shouldn't be taking more action on now? Well, what the government's done is they've, they've put in place short-term mechanisms to um, significantly reduce those requirements. So if, you, if the trading insolvent rules hadn't changed, and they have, there'd be lots of businesses that were trading insolvent. But because we've um, pushed those requirements um, out for a while, at this moment, um, those, those requirements aren't in place. Uh, so, um, but the reality is a, um, a viability assessment will determine whether the business can trade um, after JobKeeper, after they have to pay their banks um, back, after they have to pay the ATO. And remember, we've got a recession as well here. It's not just COVID. It might be a COVID-induced recession, but it means people have got less money to spend. And, you know, lots of small businesses have never been through a recession before. We've all talked about what the level of growth looks like. Uh, now we've got a real recession and we've got to learn how to run our businesses in, in a really fundamentally different economic situation.